Hi everybody, this is Caleb from Safety Pilot with another video in the VFR Pilot series. Today I am on ForeFlight Web, which is slightly different than the uh, app version. But it has, uh, although it has less information, it has everything we need for the video today, and it's going to make it easier to show what I want to show. We're going to talk today about putting in a performance profile, and I'm going to do another video after this on doing VFR nav logs in ForeFlight, which is really kind of the end goal of this. This is just a short video to get you introduced in case people are not familiar with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the flight plan and I'm going to select an aircraft. If I want to create a new airplane, I can just do add aircraft at the bottom and then I can put in the tail number and the aircraft type. Everything else on here is kind of just supplemental, especially if you're flying IFR. This is what all this stuff is for. Not really pertinent for VFR, but you can put it in if you know it and just get some extra credit points. Once we've done that, we'll go back to the map and we'll select a performance profile. Now, a lot of people only have one, one or two performance profiles for an airplane. And I would argue that uh, a better practice would be to create them for the specific circumstances you're using them in. A performance profile has the information regarding the uh, air speeds for climb, cruise, and descent, as well as the fuel used and the rates for climb and descent. And that information changes based on how high you're flying and the weather conditions, specifically on pressure altitude and any RPM setting you're using. So if we're flying when we're at a, a different pressure altitude, we're gonna have slightly different performance same thing with if we're choosing to use different throttle settings. So I would recommend calculating this before each flight using your performance information in the POH, Pilot Operating Handbook. That can be found in chapter five. And I'm gonna show you briefly how to do that right now. It's not so difficult. And you can create one of these performance profiles for each flight. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do before we even jump to our performance profile is figure out what our pressure altitude is gonna be on our flight. So to calculate pressure altitude, we can take standard pressure, which is 29.92, and then subtract whatever the pressure is at the airport nearest where we're going to be flying. So let's say this is our departure airport flying cloud of Minneapolis. With 29.92 minus 29.74, that's 0.18. We'll say, we'll just round it up to say it's 0.2. Multiply that by 1000 and we get 200. That's going to be our correction and we're going to apply that correction to our station elevation. Now, if 29.92 minus whatever this number was gave us a negative value, we would subtract it from this 906. But in this case, we add, so 906 plus 200, we'll say, is, we'll say it's 1100, round it up, or round it down, rather. Okay, so 1100, that's the pressure altitude at the surface here. Now, if we went 900 feet AGL, 900 feet above that, the pressure altitude would be 1100 plus 900 is 2000. Okay, so that's a pressure altitude of 2000, but remember, pressure altitude of 2000 in this case was only 900 AGL. Okay, so these numbers here, the pressure altitudes in our in our table are not the same as MSL altitudes or AGL altitudes. They are pressure altitudes and we want to make sure we're correcting them proper calculating them properly. Okay, so this is a table that's really standard. It's in the chapter 5 of the POH in a generic 172. Let's say we were at a pressure altitude of 4000 and we had an RPM setting of 2200. Pretty standard for cruise. We can see across the table here that our true airspeed is 112 knots and 8.6 gallons per hour if we're 20 degrees below standard temperature. Remember, standard temperature is 15 degrees Celsius at the surface and goes down 2 degrees per 1,000 feet above it. If we were at standard temperature, our numbers would be slightly different across here. So we make sure we get these two, and all, the, all we need is these two numbers, and then we can go back to four flight, open our aircraft, create a profile, and then put the numbers in. So I just got to this in a different way. Okay, so we put those numbers in, and we can do the same thing for climb and descent, remembering that climb and descent have different tables for calculating these numbers. Now, I should say that not all aircraft have descent. I remember when I was actually taking my private pilot check ride, I was asked to do descent calculations, and there was nothing in the POH, and I just kind of made it up, and DPA, DPE was fine with it. So my recommendation here is choose a descent rate that's 500 feet per minute, maybe a little bit less. 500 feet per minute is kind of the comfortable range for passengers and it's pretty standard. Uh, it's pretty standard for instrument and so in VFR it's a good number to pick. And then for your descent airspeed you can pick a number either at your cruise or maybe a little bit higher or lower depending on how you like to descend and what you're pulling your throttle to. And then in, in the name of being conservative you can set your descent fuel per hour as the same as cruise although if you're pulling if you're pulling your power back on the throttle you're probably using less fuel but for since we don't know the exact number, if you want to be conservative, you can just leave it the same as cruise. Once we've done that, we're pretty much set up for our for our flight. Now, I recommend doing one of these performance profiles before every big flight you do, like long cross countries and stuff. 
it's going to give you the best information in terms of fuel use and time and route to destination and uh, ETA and all that information. And that's all very important for fuel planning, for diversion planning, um, whether you're on a check ride or you're a student pilot or you're a VFR pilot uh, with a private pilot's license or something similar. So um, like I said, this video is going to kind of roll into a creating a VFR Navlog in ForeFlight, and this is a first step that's really important. So appreciate you guys watching and I hope you guys check out the other video.